Hello there, and welcome back, operators. Today, I've got a little bit different video for you. So, in the past, I've covered some personal raids, and gone over some of the methodology for generalized raids, including a few night raids. While it's always good to have a versatile playstyle that translates to most of your raids that you can carry over from map to map, another option is to specialize your PMC for a raid. Now, this has different advantages, depending on your goal for the raid, as well as what you choose to bring. Obviously, specializing comes at the cost of underperforming in other situations. Our particular loadout today has a few drawbacks as well, but we also gain significant advantages as long as we play according to our kit. Let's take a look at the kit I'm using today. We're going to go into detail on the weapons, the load-bearing gear, armor, and even the clothing choice. All of these are important. Let's start with the tool first. We're going to be using a T5000, a bolt-action 308 caliber rifle equipped with a Voodoo tactical rifle sight and a suppressor. An old favorite of ours, the SR-1MP or Shrimp, will be accompanying us as a backup as well. We're focusing on keeping a distance and taking targets down quietly. The suppressors help us reduce our sound profile and will make repositioning less of a chore for us in the raid. Our M1 rig is a cheap class 4 armor that gives us plenty of space. The coloring is the most important. We want the olive drab on the majority of our gear. The backpack, a beta 2, was also chosen with that in mind. Our base clothing we've recently acquired from leveling up. We're choosing to use this particular clothing choice because we want as much camouflage as possible. This is really important to our playstyle. Don't underestimate clothing. Finally, we cover our face with a mask to remove any shiny bits. The helmet is cheap, but it's the color that's important again. The sword ends are purely for helping us identify sounds in a wider radius around us. The M frames, purely for looks. Now we're also going to be bringing water and a snack because we're planning to be here for the entire raid. That's right, up to 40 minutes in raid, we are not going to be in a hurry for this. Alright, so that covers the loadout. Let's talk about where we're planning to go. Shoreline. Shoreline is a versatile map that has a great many places to acquire loot, as well as some task points. The main reason we want Shoreline is to use our familiarity with the map to our advantage. With the influx of new players, I'm coming to Shoreline to essentially abuse my knowledge of the map. Don't tell anyone. Oftentimes, the time you choose is important. For us, we just want a standard daytime raid. However, if we had the option for a dawning time, that would be ideal. The low light would provide us cover to get to our first location, then brighten up to make targets easier to spot. Regardless, a regular daytime will suffice. It won't alter our goal too much. Alright, the boring bit is out of the way. Let's get to the raid itself now. We did stay for most of the raid a good 30-ish minutes, but we're going to cut out the boring bits. Just remember this playstyle is much slower, and some raids will be slower than others. As long as you have a plan and analyze sounds, you'll find that time flies. Definitely not my first choice for spawn. Hello. You sound a little heavy to be shooting that close to town. Keep in mind, we don't want to skyline ourselves too much here, we're just trying to move really quickly to the next point. Perfect. Do packing. Oh, looks like it's just an SKS. That should still be loud enough. Here, when I say that it should be loud enough, I'm wanting to use the scav as a temporary warning system. Right. He will shoot anyone that comes by him that I don't see let him and there. give me a chance to get a better angle on him. Okay. Reach 
finished my spot. Oh, saw movement. Just a scav. Alright. Time check. We're at 42 minutes. Wait, he sees someone? They say that voice line sometimes when they see someone. Maybe not. Alright. We got plenty of time. I'm hearing shots in the distance. I can hear the river, but I can't hear... There's a customer. Light gear. Who? Or is that not so light? Two of them. Sighting at a hundred meters. Backing up, are they gonna take the fight? I want a clear shot. I don't want to try to risk it. He stops moving and aims, he's dead. Dipped into a bush, he's got a buddy. Now keep in mind, we're being very, very patient with this. We don't want to drop him somewhere that we can't see him and cover the body. And we also don't want to miss the first shot. It's very important that we hit this first shot and drop a body. Blue helmets. Full UN armor on both of them, I think. Light gear. We're getting closer, we'll change our ranging again. Basically identical. Rooftop scav will slow him down a little bit. Let's get ready to take a shot, they're getting into the kill zone. They're taking the wall. Smart. One is at least. There's the other one. As you can see, we're being extremely patient here. They have no idea that we're watching them. The longer that we hold the shot, the more at ease that they will likely be. And the higher chance that we can get a more ideal spot to drop a body, cover it, and potentially get the second one. We might not get one now. This would be the best place. Maybe not. We're still gonna take him, but we need a better angle now. We need one that affords us a view of the main area and that front door that they're most likely gonna be at. The last thing we want to do is get too close. Okay, he took a shot. Now, we're in prime ambush position. We've got the front door and yard covered, as well as the bridge to cross the river and a road to see them clearly if they push resort directly. 
All we have to do is wait and be patient. Time. There we go. Come to dad. We're gonna let him run. That's the less geared one, but he was the one in front. His most likely course of action, he's gonna try to take a hill. But we got a tree in the way. Nope, he's running up. He's attempting blind grenades, he won't reach it at that angle. He's just doing it blind. Now begins the real game, waiting. We'll cut out most of it, but this particular sequence spans around 15 to 17 minutes roughly. I'll explain why we wait so long after, but for now we're going to cut out most of the boring bits and get to what actually happened. I should have waited till he was on my side of the road. Or the bridge, I should say. Hello buddy. There's our customer. Yep, he's going to move towards us now. So, long story short here, we spotted him up at the top, and he was making his way around. We believed he was going for a long flank to come in from behind. What actually ended up happening was he went around and was heading to the extraction. We didn't know this at the time, and we were just being safe. So, we're just panning around, we're looking for where he might be coming from, where he could be right now... We did actually see him going in this direction, which is why we're being extra careful. Eventually we decide that if he's this dedicated, he's probably going to shoot us as we're in transit to the body. So we just decide to turn around, we go get the loot, and then we're going to displace so that we can actually check the loot, see if we want to keep going or if we want to actually finish the raid. Touched. Okay, even if he is still coming, now's the time to go get it. Try to be quick. Like I said, we're being quick. We're gonna grab everything, and then we're gonna dump what we don't want. Um, grab that. Yeah, his armor didn't do anything for him. Okay, so we're not going back to our original spot. We are going to a new location. Ideally back up in here. So I grabbed everything, but there's some stuff that's not worth keeping. Like for me, I'm not going to keep that. Alright, from here on out, the raid is mostly uneventful. I do want to show you the general pathing, though, that we're taking, and the reasoning that we're taking it. So I'm just going to kind of talk over what's going on here a bit. We're going to cut to the specific points so that you can have landmarks that you can follow if you want to use the exact same route or something similar to it. Um, but there's going to be not much else action really going on from this point on. 
So if you're done with the action, you don't really want to see pathing. You can skip towards the end to kind of see the final thoughts. But if you want to see the pathing, stick around. Okay. In the interest of staying unpredictable, we're going to cross here. There's two reasons that we're choosing to cross the gas station area. The first one is that it is displaced from where we dropped the original body and had the loot. This basically ensures that anyone that's waiting for us to kind of cycle back around is not going to find us there. The second reason is that this actually has a low-hanging wall that we can hide behind and protect us from the other side, and a dip with that wall that protects us from our side as well, just in case there's any other potential snipers or ambushers that are lurking around. So we use it until we get close enough to the bridge that we can feasibly start running towards it and get to the other side. We're not going to do the offices. Interesting, that box is never open. So the reason that box observation is important is because it means that someone's trafficked through. We already know that the other two that we shot at before were the ones that trafficked through. But if we didn't know that, this actually gives us valuable information that someone could be in the area still, or that someone has been through and no one else is probably coming through for a long time. It depends on the timing in the raid. Because we're towards the end, we can basically assume that we're going to be safe this entire road all the way to our exit. That's not to say that you should be complacent at this point. People could be anywhere. Players are often unpredictable, especially new players. On top of that, player scavs could spawn in several random locations and they could be trafficking through at any point in the raid. You don't really know what's going to be ahead of you, so always keep your eyes open. That's why you can see here, we're actually glassing the way ahead of us both on the hill because we thought we saw something, and then in the construction area, which is where we take out two scavs. That fight's relatively uninteresting, so we're just going to skip it. But know that this is the direction we're going. The shore is to our right. We have that construction area, and we have the road as well, that we just follow it all the way down. I'd also rather not run in the straight line when I'm about to skyline. Might be some scabs up there. If there are, I just want to leave them. Now, before you go calling me a coward, I'm not leaving scabs because I'm scared of them. I'm leaving them because they will probably not have anything that's worth it to me to pick up. As I'm going along here, you'll notice that I'm running towards some stashes that are on the map. There's several videos explaining where these are. You can find them just by walking around and exploring. I'm not going to go into too much detail with them, but here I am on my way to hit a little hidden stash, one of the wooden ones, there's a buried barrel, and then another hidden stash that's farther up along this river here. I'm going to show little bits and pieces of it, just so you can kind of get an idea of where I'm going, but I'm basically out of the raid by now heading to the exit. Invisible's kind of a strong term for it, but it's the way I feel. Let's see, anything good? Oh, okay, too many invisible walls. It would have been guaranteed if I got the second guy, but... He played it smart. I don't know if he did that on purpose, but he did the right thing. Alright, let's review what happened now. We specialized our kit as a sniper, meaning we wanted to make our first bullet count at a distance. We played to our strengths of stealth and timing, and it did pay off. We avoided damage completely, which actually saves you money. Dying isn't cheap in Tarkov, so the more you save on meds is the more you're making every raid. Because we kept our patience, we were rewarded with a favorable engagement, one that we took as soon as it opened to us. Overall, the kit we sold and the items we picked up netted us about 360,000 rubles. It's not a crazy amount, but factory in that it's 360,000 of pure profit, it will refund our kit and make the next raid even more profitable. 
We could even use some of this funding to improve our weapons further if we thought it necessary. I hope this gives a little insight into just another way to play the game. There's a myriad of ways to approach every raid, and it's always fun to see who likes what styles of play. Let me know if this is one you use yourself, or would think about using. I can give you tips on different maps anytime. Well, that's going to wrap it up for the video today. I hope you all enjoyed. If you'd like to see more, don't forget to subscribe. I try to post weekly at the least. You can follow me on Twitter for personalized questions and responses. I always try to answer rapidly and accurately. You can also catch me on Twitch. I have a weekly schedule I put up on the page as well as on Twitter every Sunday and I'm always willing to have tag-alongs. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay safe out there, operators.